Well, thank you so much for your company this morning. Dr. Lee Waters has developed a groundbreaking new approach to raising children. It's called strength-based parenting, and it revolves around focusing on kids' strengths rather than trying to correct their weaknesses. Sounds like it all makes perfect sense, really, doesn't it? But how easy is it to put into practice? Lee is here to tell us all about it. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Such a pleasure to have you here. We should start really with a bit of your background. Um, tell us about yourself and your career. Uh, well, I've been a psychologist for 22 years, um, focusing on the field of positive psychology, which is a, a field that looks at, rather than kind of fixing weaknesses and correcting what's wrong with us, looking at how do we identify our natural talents, assets, strengths, and amplify those. So that's my professional career. Um, background, uh, grew up in a, a, a family with a mother who had a very severe mental illness and um, suffered from mental illness myself, eating disorder in my teen years, depression and anxiety in my 20s. Um, and because of my own backstory, very, very committed now to working as a psychologist to help make kids feel well and parents feel good in their job and create happy families. It's very important too. Yeah, and I love the fact you're sharing through this book as well. So what is the, you know, strengthening? Mm -hmm. what, how would you describe it? The essence, yeah, great question. And so, I mean, really what we're doing when we take a strength-based approach, it can be as a parent, it can be as a partner, as a friend, um, as a colleague, as a boss, is to focus our attention first and foremost on what are the, the strengths, the assets, the talents, the, those positive aspects of someone's personality and seek first to, to help someone make the most of and amplify and maximise what is right with them before we focus on fixing what is wrong with us. Because we all have a lot in terms of what is wrong with us, but equally we also, everyone has their own unique strengths. And yes. I think mm. our, our natural tendency is to think, I have to fix what's wrong with me. Um, well, we do, don't we? Mm. Yeah, that's, that's how we, na that's our natural go-to, our default. Yes. How did you come up with the strength-based parenting? Strength-based parenting, well, it was, again, it's a blend of personal and professional. So um, being a psychologist and, and, and kind of doing the science, I work at a university, so I do a lot of research into how do we maximise our strengths? At the same time, having kids myself. So I have a 15-year-old who is now taller than me. Yeah, <laughs> That's yeah. one of those little moments feels. of like, oh yeah. my God, my baby. Yes, um, I, and an 11-year-old. Yeah. And so really kind of just blending what the, the field of positive psychology was telling us to be good science. You know, how do, we, how do we bring out our best selves? And then blending that in with my own life. And just looking at my kids and seeing, you. Yes, they have problem behaviour and yes, they have faults and they have idiosyncrasies, but each of them also have unique strengths. And, and my, my, my challenge and my gift as a parent is to help them see those and amplify those. So. And what are the benefits you get from applying this? And, and the other thing I want to ask is how do you identify what your strengths are as well? Yeah. Okay, so let's start with the, first, the second question first. How yes. do you identify? Yeah. And so what we know about strengths are strengths are the things that we do well. They come naturally to us, but they're also the things that give us energy and, and we're self-motivated to do. So often when we think about a strength, we think about, well, that's just that they're the things that I'm good at. And that's absolutely true. So anything that you're good at is a strength. But um, there's some additional elements to that. So a strength is something that you do good at, get energy from, right. and are self-motivated to do. And that distinction is important um, in parenting because sometimes we can look at what our kids are good at and maybe inadvertently push them into, we're well, all good at that, that must be a strength. So we'll push you into that area, but it may not be giving them energy right. and it may not be something that's self-motivated to do. So what we're looking for as parents is, is the evidence of what does my child do naturally, effortly, they, they can kind of pick up a guitar and seem to be so advanced at it at quite a young age. Mm. Um, but what are they getting energy from? And what are they choosing to do in their own time without us having to overstructure and right. force them into? So you say, for example, maybe they're good at guitar. We mm -hmm. see that, go, oh, that's a strength, they're good at guitar, you should play guitar. Yes. Even that's pushing them into a certain strength that maybe they don't want to go into. Yeah, if you don't, if you don't end up seeing the energy and the self-motivation behind it, if you're having to constantly say, do your guitar yeah. practice, do your guitar practice, do your guitar practice, practice then it's a talent but it's not necessarily a strength but sometimes with those things too is that as you say you have to do the repetition but all of yeah. a sudden they'll reach a level where they'll yeah. suddenly go oh I love this now I know because you've pushed them so where do you yeah. draw the such boundaries there it's such a good point as a as a parent and what you're what you're looking for is that balance of saying once they get to a certain level of proficiency then it becomes energizing and then they become self-motivated and it's just one of those things as a wisdom of a parent is just to check in what am i seeing after each practice how often am i having to nag am i starting to see little glimpses of their own self-motivation enjoyment mm. coming through i mean use the example of the guitar tap into what motivates them i have a 15 year old son 
So what would motivate him is look, looking cool in front of the girls, you know. So <laughs> True. That's, that's how you that you know that's how you would go into the motivation piece around that. Yeah. And, and from that, what are the benefits? So many benefits to taking a strength-based approach. And you know, as a psychologist, my my key um, outcome is mental health. Huge amount of mental health benefits mm. for a young person who is able to tap into their strengths and use their strengths because strengths are the things that we're good at. We get energy from and we're self-motivated to do. So the more you can help your kids see their strengths, the better they're performing, the more energised they are, the more self-motivated they are. So, of course, that has all these positive ripple-on effects to self-esteem and self-identity and mental health. Yeah. It's funny that you say, uh, you, as parents, you think, well, I do identify my children's strength because mm -hmm. obviously I want to encourage them to things. But is it actually quite a difficult thing for parents to actually do? I mean, yeah. how do you do it? <laughs> and that sounds obvious, but that you know, no, no, it's such an important question to ask, and um, because it does, it's common sense. And when you talk about it, everyone goes, "Yes, that's common sense." I think it was Einstein who said, "Common sense doesn't occur very commonly," because <laughs> as a parent, you know, we're busy, we're task focused, we regardless of whether you're a parent or not, what the psychologists have now shown us is that everyone has this inbuilt, what we call a negativity bias, it's built into our brain. It helped our species to survive. And that is that we're always looking for what can go wrong, what's the error, where's the threat, what do I need to fix? Mm. And so even the most loving parent, even the most optimistic parent subconsciously is looking at their child saying, what do I need to fix in you in order to get you to adult life? And what my research shows is this counterintuitive, which is rather than spending your time fixing what's wrong with your child, if you spend your time building up what's right with them, that's what makes them happy in adult life. OK, what if your kid is fighting mm -hmm. or, or naughty? Yeah. How do you apply all of this mm -hmm. in amongst the mix? That is such a great question too. And I have a whole chapter on strength-based discipline. Good. Um, <laughs> but the point is, you know, I'm it is, that bit. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's been, it's been earmarked by a lot of people. I think in that situation, what you do is, as a parent, you just stop and you pause and mm -hmm. you think, what would, what's the positive opposite? What would I rather see instead? So if my two kids are fighting, the temptation is to say, stop fighting, I'm sick of you fighting. But instead, just pause and think, well, what would I rather see instead? So rather than stop fighting, like, hey, guys, how about some cooperation right now? Like, where's your fairness in this situation? You know, I saw you being so kind yesterday. How about you be kind to your sister right now? So you're still disciplining. You're still letting them know this is not right, but you're bringing them out of it through a strength rather than trying to, like, fix a weakness. Mm. What age, is there a certain age where it's not going to work anymore? Or can you bring it in at any age of your children? Any age, any age. So, you know, obviously I started doing this before my kids were born. I started doing it in my own personal healing journey in my 30s. And that was the first time I was really kind of connected into what are my own strengths and how do I use those to overcome depression and anxiety. And so any age, um, obviously the earlier the better, but a, I'm, a lot of parents with teenagers are reading this book and just saying it's helping them to see their teen in a different light. Yeah. And it's just softening that relationship because the teenager doesn't feel like, the teenager feels like you're seeing the good in me. And in teenage years, it's such a time where our identity is all over the place. That, to have a parent, <laughs> so to have a parent in your back, you know, in your corner, got your back with like, I know things are challenging and I know, and I see your moody behavior and I see you're not studying, but I also see that you're incredibly kind or you're incredibly brave. And these are these like essential qualities that, because everyone's born with strengths yes. and they're different. They'll be different from Mike, they'll be different from Mel, they're different from me. We have them. So these are these essential qualities that a parent can say, I know you've got that and that will shine through. Okay, Lee, can you give me a, sort of like a real life example? Yeah. I hate to use your kids as guinea pigs. <laughs> <laughs> but you've applied it to them and you've mm. probably seen other examples. Can you share with us some of them? Of it in practice, I guess. A real life example yeah. of using a strength-based approach yeah. in practice? Yeah, okay, so my beautiful daughter, Emily, is 11, gorgeous, um, a little bit impatient, and she knows that about herself. So <laughs> we're trying to work on impatience because it's not helpful for her and it's, and it's not helpful for her friendships and it's, a bit frustrating at home and for her teacher. So we're very much aware of like, this is something that we want to work on. How can we use a strength to help you work on that? So in the same way that one of her weaknesses is impatient, one of her strengths is kindness and curiosity. So what we're doing now in those moments of impatience, impatience in a friendship is, is saying to her, you know, remember to be kind, you're a kind person. And so the minute she comes at that from kindness, it's like the impatience kind of diminishes mm. and likewise at school when she's getting impatient with her lessons in class is just to draw on her curiosity which is a natural strength she's just been a curious cat 
from birth. Which yeah. is great. Actually, that brings me to say this. Just, just say somebody had a child who <laughs> was hypothetically, a, hypothetically <laughs> who was a fiddler, who yeah. was really interested in computers and everything, but reset your computers and your televisions and everything yeah. Yeah. very quickly at home. Right. Um, which is great because they're curious, but very annoying because they fiddle with everything. Mm. What would you do in that situation? Okay. So <laughs> hypothetically, yeah. Hypothetically, yeah. If I if I was confronted with that situation hypothetically, no, I mean I would start first with it's great. Like you, I really love your curiosity, and it's been and it's used in so many good ways. But when you use it in this context, it's actually really annoying for me, <laughs> and it causes me time. So let's see what else we can be curious about. Okay. And just redirect the strength. It's just a redirection process. Good. But it's starting first with this is a good quality, but you're not using it in the right way. Great. Rather so than just, you're bad, you're yeah. bad, you're annoying. Stop fiddling. Yeah, yeah. and not just yeah. for parents, for everybody. It's a great mm -hmm. philosophy there. Yeah. Thank you. My pleasure. Brilliant. The Learned a lot. strength switch for everybody. You should have give it a good read. Yeah. Thank you so much for stopping by. It's been great. It's enlightening. Dr. Lee Waters' new book, that, well, her book, The Strength Switch, is available now. And you can check out her website for more details as well.